Hey guys, I'm Cyborg Sheep, and welcome to the Weekend Post. This episode, I've had the idea on my mind for a while, and today, we are going to make that idea a reality. I want to take this RC car, right here, this little cheap Walmart RC car, and I want to turn it into a actual hobby grade car. Um, doing certain things like changing this brushed motor and converting it over to a, a brushless motor and changing the servo. Also, I want to upgrade the radio on this thing or actually give it a radio because up until this point, it doesn't have a radio. So, let's get started with this video. So, in the beginning, let's talk about some specifics of this thing. For the remote, I'm, I chose the FS GT2B. It's a Fly Sky remote, which basically I don't know. It's I haven't I haven't used this thing specifically yet, but flipping the switches and moving the controls and stuff like that, it seems to be like a pretty good radio. Also, it has this uh, LiPo battery right here. And it's got three channels. It's got your throttle, your steering, and a button right there for some special function. It even comes with the radio to, to use the thing. So, also some specifics on the car. Now, I don't want to go out and buy a motor for this, for this car because that would just be a waste of waste of money. I think what would be much better and simpler to do, or maybe in some places more complex, but relatively simple, would be to convert this motor from a brush motor to a brushless motor. That's as simple as uh, taking off the brush assembly of the motor, making the magnets, the, the part that moves, and the Windings the part that is stationary So the first big problem that I re realized way early on was the fact that the motor on this car has five poles now For for that and turning it into a brushless motor it really isn't ideal because Generally a brushless motor has either three six nine or even 12 poles. The reason is because a brushless motor uses power that is pulsed in by sine waves and the, and there's three of them and they're out of, out of phase with each other by 120 degrees. And basically what that does is it creates a rotating magnetic, magnetic field like so, or, which basically the magnets will follow. So after thinking about it for a while, I, I figured that I basically take two stator pairs and make them one coil and another two stator pairs and make them one coil and then a third coil down here. That way there's three coils which will each be controls by the three phases coming into the motor. Basically how I'll do it is like this. Here's one coil, here's another coil, and here's the last coil. So, now that I know what I want for the motor, let's figure out the servo. First of all, let's start this assembly though. So, taking off the top servo plate. And here we have it. Here is the servo and the control board for the whole car. So, I'm simply going to remove this screw here. So, here I am simply cutting off the wire connections to the individual parts because I know I won't need the circuit board.
So, after tons of disassembly, this is what I end up with. Here we can see the drive motor, the servo along with the control board and the antenna, a couple of gears, the housing for the motor, a heat sink, even though completely unnecessary because that motor usually never gets too hot, and basically the empty frame itself. So, time to disassemble the motor. As you can see here, there's a little tab right there for holding on, on the back plate, a slot light right here for indexing, and a big wad of solder right here. What I'm assuming is underneath that wad of solder is another tab for holding the top on. So I need to do some desoldering in order to get the top off. I guess that looks kind of good. So now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little tiny slotted screwdriver, just like I did over here, okay, as you can kind of see here, and I'm just going to pry up that little tab right there. Ta-da! Check it out! That actually got open a lot but easier than I thought it would. So, now we can actually make sense of what I'm talking about here about the brushes and stuff. So here they are. So they're just two little pieces of graphite. And so your power will connect here on these two points. And then it'll go through into here and here. And then... I don't know if you can see that there, but on the on the actual rotor, there is this little um, there's this little copper ring, and that's divided up into three segments. Now I, that actually kind of surprises me now because um, I I wonder if there there's there's really no point now in doing the dividing up the five poles. Now I can just individually wire the uh, three poles of this motor. So that'll make things really easy. So there you go. That's a bit easier than I thought. So the next thing I need to do is to get this gear off of here. That That's necessary because um, in order to get the uh, armature out, this gear interferes with the shaft coming through the hole. So I need to get that out. And there's this uh, device that I know of and it's called a gear puller. And basically what it does is it puts pressure on the shaft on the inside and pressure on the, on the face and it hooks on to the gear and pulls the gear off. But just taking off the back now, this is actually really cool. I've never seen in a, in a inside one of these motors myself, but it's really cool to see all, all see and think of all the uh, machining processes that go into these things. So, got the gear off. Now, time to start rewiring this armature. So. For rewiring the motor, I went ahead and I got myself 26 gauge wire. If you're curious about what the gauge is, it's simply the thickness of the copper wire. Now, this is magnet wire, not your standard copper wire. It's called magnet wire because what they do is they put a 
a little bit of coating on here to isolate each copper wire from the copper wire around it and from this steel stator. If it, if it wasn't coated, it would short out and most likely burn out the wires in the motor. So by putting a coating on there, they, they make it way, way easier to make motors. So simply by playing with the pair of pliers, the wire at, that connects to the commutator and unwinding the wire from the stator packs, I took off all the, all the coils from the stator. There we go guys. Not all the wires off there. The next thing to do would be to get the shaft off, off of the stator. Put it on the plate so that it fits firmly and stationary. Finally, adapt this casing here so that it rotates the shaft instead of this. And then putting it onto the frame. But considering I'm running out of time, I'll do that in the next episode. So, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you dudes in the next episode.